Hello my friends, this is the second part of PVTI tutorial. So in this video I am going to upload uh, another composition to the PVTI and we are going to discover what we can do in the PVTI and uh, what are the uh, application of the different functions in the PVTI. So for the composition I use the PVT Danish book. So in the PVT Danish book in the exercise 2.5 we have a composition, it's a reservoir fluid composition and it says that this is the oil composition and the reservoir temperature and we have reservoir temperature and initial reservoir pressure and also we have uh, for example uh, other uh, experiments so, so we later we can use these experiments to tune our model so for now uh, the first step is to insert this composition this composition to the pvti to see if we can uh, how we can model the phase behavior of this oil with the this composition so basically the composition consists of a, ni a nitrogen car a carbon dioxide and other hydrocarbons and we have c12 plus and we have a, a molecular, molar fra fraction of the each component and at the end we have a c12 plus characterization which is a molecular weight and specific gravity so let's jump in the pvti to enter this in the pvti so we know that in the fundamental section of PVTI we can enter the, our uh, composition. So if you don't know how we, we move to this uh, uh, window, you can check the previous video. So here we need to enter all the components and the uh, mole fractions here. So what I'm going to use right now, I'm going to upload the fundamentals file here and then I'm going to edit the composition based on that, based on the table that we have here. So you can import the fundamental file that we tagged previously. So this is the a fundamental file, but we know that we are going to have a mole fraction. So you can tap on the space and say that treat the consecutive uh, spaces as one and then you say that ignore first and second row so it will be something like this so that's okay uh, right now we have co2 n2 c1 to c6 and what we need to do right now is to first edit all these composition uh, all these molar fractions. So for the CO2 we have 1.49, for N2 which is 0 0.9, for metan which is C1 it is 51.54 and 6.57 for 0.83 Zero, 0 0.68 2 .39, 0 0.91 NC5 is 1.47 and 0 0.47 and 0 0.47 and C6 is 2.17 and we can write for example c7 is uh, 4.3 c c8 uh, will be 3.96 and if you notice that uh, if you click here, you don't have any extra row to enter the rest of the composition. What you need to do is just click here and right click. And in the right click, you can say, for example, insert row. So if you, uh, you can notice here that we insert another row here, so we can enter C9. And with C9 is 1.93 and again do the same procedure so insert row 
which will be C10 and C10 is a 1.66 insert row C11 which is 1.38 and the last one is C12 plus and it is 13.82 and we know that for plus fraction we need to specify the molecular weight specific gravity or one or one of them so for example here we can say we know that molecular weight for the C C12 plus is 265 so you can enter here in the molecular weight column and specific gravity is 0 0.883 so you can interpret here 883 and we are going to use a field unit uh, right now we don't have any point that specify that uh, we have this point for, for, to the PVTI that match the model based on that point so leave it blank we don't have anything here and click on apply and if you notice when you click on apply you can see the mold, total mole fraction is 100 it means that uh, PVT is going to check that all, the sum of all these molar fractions will be 100 if you are using person. So if it is, uh, for example, more than 100 or less than 100, you are going to get error for that. And after apply, click on OK. And if you click OK, you, you will see this one. So this is the main uh, PVTI window. And this is the fluid that we already entered. Okay, so right now we are going to discover some of the features of the PVTI to see what we can do here. So if you right click on the fluid that you already entered, the first item is fingerprint plot. So click on fingerprint plot. If you notice here, this plot is a mole percent versus mole, mole weight. Okay, so what does mean? You already entered some uh, some of the components in the PVTI and for example you you have C1 what is the mole weight for the C1 it is 16 okay so if you go for example find the 16 okay it says that uh, what what is the mole percentage for the 16 which is methane so it is a 16 is the first point so you as you can see find here it says that mole percent for the uh, methane is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 something, okay? So let's check it. So the composition that you have here for the methane is 51. So this point, this point represents the methane, okay? And this, the second one, for example, is a uh, ethane. So this is a molecular, uh, it should be N2, yeah, N2. So this is the uh, mole, weight, mole weight corresponding to the N2, and this is the mole fraction for the N2. So basically, uh, this graph is a, this is a graphical representative of this composition that you already enter. So we call that fingerprint. So this is the fingerprint. The right click on the composition that you already entered. The second one is a phase plot. So this is a phase envelope for the for your fluid. And if you remember from the PVT course, uh, phase envelope is a, a graph which is has a one axis a pressure and another axis is a temperature. So it's a PT diagram or pressure temperature diagram. And this shows that if our fluid is somewhere here, it means that we have a liquid, a liquid phase. It means that we have an oil reservoir, okay? So, and if we have something here, it means that we, we are in the two-phase region. So we are, we are going to have a gas and a liquid at the same time. And this column, the green one, showing the bubble point. Okay, so this is representing a bubble point or saturation point. So in this line, in this green line, the first droplet of a gas is coming uh, out of the oil. So out, 
outside of the oil. So if we are decreasing the pressure when reached to this point, we are seeing the first droplet of gas. And further decreasing the pressure causes that we are going to have gas and the oil uh, phases. The red one is showing the dew line. So it means that uh, if you increase the pressure, for example, from this point, if you increase the pressure in this line, the first droplet of uh, oil or liquid will be will be appear. So it's the opposite of the uh, saturation point or bubble point. So you can see everything here for uh, for the PT diagram. What it is why it is important because in this diagram you can find your reservoir to see what kind of reservoir you have. For example, if you go to the Danish. For this specific example, it says that our reservoir is 195 degrees Fahrenheit and 5,700 psi. So if you back here in 195 degrees Fahrenheit and 5,000, you can see that it will be somewhere here. So it means that you have an undersaturated reservoir and you are going to have only oil in the reservoir. But if, for example, this is the example. The reservoir pressure was something like 3000 at the same temperature. The reservoir will be somewhere here. It means that your reservoir in, the, your, in your reservoir you have a gas and oil inside the reservoir. So this is the phase envelope that uh, we are going to deal with a lot uh, later. Another thing that you can find to go and right click after fingerprint and phase plot is a ternary plot. So in the ternary plot, you need to specify that in which, con in which uh, temperature and pressure you want ternary diagram. What is the difference between ternary diagram and the phase envelope? In the phase envelope, we are changing temperature and pressure to see how, the, uh, how we are going to, uh, to have which phases in the reservoir or in the, our PVT cell. But here in the ternary plot, you are going to have a constant pressure and temperature and instead you are going to change the composition to see, for example, at the reservoir temperature and pressure, if you change the composition, what will happen due to your original uh, fluid. So let's um, have the, for example, 195 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the reservoir temperature that we had in the PVT Danish in the exercise. So it is a 195 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, 5712 psi so let's enter that to 5712 and psi gauge if we have it here uh, no we don't have so basically it's, we need to add 14 degrees so it will be 26 so what happened because here uh, in the book we had PSI gauge, so G, so, but we need to change that to the PSI A, so that's why I added 14 to the uh, pressure that we had here. So right now we have a temperature and pressure, and this is the composition that we already applied, so click on OK. So you can see the ternary diagram here. So if you remember from the phase behavior course, uh, in the ternary diagram, we have a lightest component at the top, which is our, in our case is the C1. We have intermediate components in the right hand, so it's a C2 to C6, and C7 plus or uh, heavy component in the left hand. So in this plot, it shows that if we are somewhere here, it means that we have two phases. So our, if the composition of the, for example, uh, C1 is uh, 80% and uh, C2 to C6 is, for example, 10% and uh, C7 plus is a 10%. So some it will be somewhere here. So it means that we have a two-phase region. But if we are some somewhere here, it means that we have a one phase. So it's a ternary diagram. And if uh, you are interested, I can have another video to, to show uh, how you can find the composition and what is the exact meaning of ternary diagram. So what, what you need to uh, know right now is that you can have a ternary diagram if, uh, in the uh, PVTI.
again go back to the your original float and here the next one is the edit mode fractions so basically in the edit mode fraction you already had a mode fraction here so if you want to change the mode fraction and if you want to see for example if you increase the CO2 concentration what will happen or if you if, if you want to change the composition you can edit the you can click here and edit the composition to see uh, to, to see what will be the effect of changing the composition in the phase behavior and the next item that we have is a uh, clean so so it, let's we are going to talk with about this one later so just skip this one and the next one is a, a property estimation so what is a property estimation for example if you want to know what uh, what will the if you want to do for example flash calculation in some point or if you want to have for example saturation pressure test or separation test or pressure depletion test so you can add those tests here okay so for the flash calculation you need a temperature and pressure so for example first we are starting from the reservoir temperature and pressure we know that in the reservoir condition in this example we are going to have a one phase so flash calculation doesn't make sense but it's just example so just we enter temperature and pressure and note the uh, units that we have here and click on ok so if you click ok you can see that you have a flash experiments here so if you right click on the flash and go to the for example report you can see that you have a clean report here that it says that for example in this uh, condition the everything will be liquid and you don't have any gas phases here and it makes sense because if you go to the phase envelope the point will be somewhere here it means that you, we have a one phase we don't have a two phase so it uh, flash calculation doesn't make sense for now but for example if we are going to have another point so let's take an example and say we are going to do the flash calculation in this point so the temperature will be 195 degrees fahrenheit and the pressure will be 3000 so let's go in the property estimation and it will be flash so 195 degrees fahrenheit and the pressure will be uh, 3000 psi and if you click on ok so this, this will be flash 2 and click on right click on the flash 2 and go to report so in the report as you can see here it says that uh, in this condition for example first it says that for we, you use the Peng robinson equation of state for the viscosity correlation you you use lbc method and it is the day set is a two phase set so it means that you are in the two phase region yes uh, and this is a report for the flash and as you can see here for the now we have liquid phases phase composition and vapor phase composition and the k values for the each component so uh, if you want to do the flash calculation in different condition you can see that how you can you can have it in the uh, pvti the next item see what's the next item here so go to write this and the next item is to delete for example if you want to delete all the composition all the fluid that you already enter you can go to there so i guess this uh, this is okay for the second tutorial and in the next tutorial we are going to uh, add some experiments and to see how we can tune the model and how we can define the experiments in the uh, PVTI.